Seaver, nicknamed the franchise by New York writers, begins in overpowering fashion. The franchise. There was no nickname more fitting. From his very first appearance, George Thomas Seaver was the New York Mets. Their best player, their clubhouse leader, their most charismatic star. key name of that generation. What he was able to do on the pitching mound was just incredible. I can distinctly, as a 15-year-old at the time, remember thinking, now we've got our DiMaggio, our Mays, our Mantle. Now we've got one who was in effect for the ages. The Mets hit the jackpot when they landed Tom Seaver. They won the lottery, literally. In 1966, Seaver had signed with the Braves out of the University of Southern California, but an obscure rule forbade college players from inking deals while their collegiate seasons were underway. Major League Baseball voided the contract, and the names of every team willing to match the Braves' offer were put into a hat. The winning pick was the losingest team in baseball. Well, one thing, obviously, that I always remember, my first ball game that I ever pitched in the major leagues, we won. I, did, I didn't get the credit for the win, but I participated in a winning effort. That was, the, that was certainly a memorable event for me. He really was the guy that set the tone for everything there. He brought hope. In his debut season in 1967, Seaver took home National League Rookie of the Year honors and got the win in the All-Star game. What a skillful, almost incredible performance by the finest young right-hander in baseball, Tom Seaver. At just 22 years old, he pitched like a 10-year veteran. He was so smart, and, and he had such passion for pitching. He called it an art form. There was no sophomore jinx in 1968. Seaver was even better, lifting the New York Mets out of the cellar in the NL East. We are a ball club to be contended with, and I think that those that who have not believed in this before, I think have every right to believe in this now. And then in 1969 came the miracle. Led by Seaver's brilliant pitching, the club reached 500 on May 21st. The first time in franchise history, the Mets didn't have a losing record after at least nine games in a season. I remember the team celebrating, and they were all excited about it. And, I, and Tom Seaver said, I don't want to be a 500 ball player. I want to be a winning ball player. I'll celebrate when we win. Seaver would back up those words, winning his first Cy Young Award in 1969 while stepping up in the biggest moments. On July 8th, while the Mets were sitting four games behind Chicago, Seaver threw perhaps the greatest game of his career against those first-place Cubs, retiring the first 25 batters before losing a perfect game with one out in the ninth. Now the applause for Tom Seaver. Eight and one-third innings of perfect baseball by Seaver. Here's the ovation for Seaver. Tom Terrific didn't lose after August 5th, going 10-0 down the stretch as the Miracle Mets came roaring back to capture their first division title. At 9.07 on September 24th, the Mets have won the championship of the Eastern Division. Congratulations, Tom, on a great year. Rob is great. It's a third of what we want. We hope we get the rest of it. Riding that wave of emotion, the Mets cruised through the championship series against Atlanta and then toppled the heavily favored Orioles in the World Series, stunning the baseball world. We never put our heads between our legs and we always fought and it's the greatest feeling in the world. You know, Seaver was the catalyst. He's the guy that transformed the lovable losers into the most unlikeliest of World Series champions. The next season, Tom Seaver continued to pitch brilliantly. He struck out 283 batters in 1970, including a then-record 19 on April 22nd, fanning 10 in a row to close out the game. He was unbelievable. He mowed them down. The last 10 guys in the game never hit the ball. Seaver struck out 289 batters and won 20 games in 1971. He won 21 the next year and struck out 249. And then in 1973, Seaver did it all again, not only piling up the wins and strikeouts, but leading the Mets to another National League pennant. The New York Mets have won the pennant. The New York Mets have won the pennant. And this is a wild team. 
All told, Tom Seaver's consistency was unmatched by any pitcher of his generation. We got him. That's number 200. He racked up 200 strikeouts in a major league record nine consecutive years. He won Cy Young Awards in 1969, 1973, and 1975. He was the face of the sport, a media sensation in the media capital of the world. He was the franchise. And then June 15th, 1977, New York City awoke to shocking news. The Mets had traded Tom Seaver to Cincinnati. As far as the fans go, I mean, I've given them a great number of thrills. Um, and they've been equally returned. And the uh, ovation I got the other night. You going to miss them, Tom? Tom Seaver would continue his winning ways as a Red, including notching an emotional victory over the Mets in his return to Shea Stadium. Like a reunion with their own fondest memory. New York fans poured out their love for the man, not the uniform. Adding insult to injury for New York fans, after throwing five one-hitters in his Mets days, Tom Seaver would finally get his elusive no-hitter June 16, 1978. And this one belongs to the Reds! Seaver would spend five and a half seasons in Cincinnati, along the way becoming just the fifth pitcher in baseball history to record 3,000 strikeouts. Take a bow, Tom. After 14 seasons, man, you burn. And then in 1983, with new ownership in place, the Mets re-signed Tom Seaver, only to see the reunion cut short when he was selected by the Chicago White Sox in the free agent draft. It was with Chicago that Tom Seaver arrived in New York City August 4th, 1985, with a chance at making history. This is justice. This is justice. He wins his 300 in New York in Yankee Stadium. Should be in shape. With his familiar number 41 out of place in the Bronx instead of Queens, Tom Seaver took home victory number 300 the old-fashioned way with a complete game win. A 40-year-old Tom Terrific Tom Seaver the emotions spilling out all over. That's as happy as I've been after a ball game in a long time. Of course, you know, it's taken me 19 years to get here, you know. <laughs> oh, I expected somebody to say, what took you so long? <laughs> after a brief stop with the Red Sox in 1986, Seaver again re-signed with the Mets, this time to retire in the uniform where it all began. It's hard to imagine anyone doing what Tom Seaver did because no one will ever be the first again. You can only win it for the first time once. You can only be the first great player developed by a franchise once. And really, that makes Tom Seaver an almost impossible act to match. On January 2nd, 1992, George Thomas Seaver was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame with 98.8% of the vote, more than any other player who came before him.